Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Jim Hamilton. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering here at Northwestern. Yay! Are we going to your lab? Let's go! All right. How did you get into geotechnical engineering? Uh, that <clears throat> is an excellent question. Okay. I think, I firmly believe that it's because I played a lot in the dirt when I was a kid. Okay. And that explained a lot and had a proclivity and interest in math and science and the form. There you go. And marrying those two things together, building stuff, carpentry, being around, being around farmers, and then I wound up uh, researching dirt for for a living? Yeah. What you'll see. There it is. Here's one sort of slab. Okay. Here's Jaffe. Hello. He's going to show us how this thing works. Here's Say. Here's Sam. You guys are live. <laughs> they don't look at all happy right now, but uh, they are. They're happy guys. <laughs> so our lab, this is a lab that's actually being used right now, which means it's not clean. This is what it's supposed to look like when stuff is actually happening. So you guys are in on this too, right? Say something funny. Yeah. I, I love dirt. This is Say's innovation <coughs> suggestion that we name the robot. It's an ABB robot. Did you guys do this? Put the Y at the end, so it's Abby. Abby the ABB <laughs> robot. We said we're doing soil research. There's the soil. The robot we're just using as an actuator to run tests on the soil. And uh, are we going to get a demonstration of both of them? Can we do that too, the fluidization part? Yeah. And uh, I can poke at this. The, one of the very first questions that we had when we built this test bed was, what is this soil that we're creating? What's the density? What are its mechanical properties? And in order to figure this out, Jaffe and Sam would say, uh, have been running all of these penetrometer tests. And this is just a taste of the kind of stuff that we can do in this lab. We can mount various instruments, devices to the end of the robot, and then we can do these big sweeping motions, six degree of freedom motions, translations, rotations, everything. And okay. Jaffe's going to show us what is, I guess, you know, one of the lesser uh, things that we can do with it in terms of interest, but it's kind of cool. <coughs> so the idea with a pen pentrometer is that as Jaffe's pushing it in there, as Abby's pushing it in there, we're measuring the force, and then we're able to use the force that you measure as you go in as an index of what is the strength of the sand, what is the density of the sand. And okay. you'll see in a minute, this all ties together nicely, actually. When she runs the fluidized bed, you'll see why that's so important. It turns out this is a little taste of soil mechanics. And so it's very important, what is the preparation? I mean, the practical application of this stuff out, stuff out in the real world is you've got to know what you're going to build a building on this deposit of sand. Is it loose? Is it dense? When the earthquake comes through, shakes everything, is it going to liquefy? So you're seeing little pieces of that in here. I mean, we do pretty fundamental stuff. And this is this is the lab. We do simulations. We do calculations. Uh, um, we do all of it in here, theory and experiments. You want to see a, some fluidization? This is going to be a real-time experiment. Think, think building. That is a building there. This is like a maybe a gas tank, right? Switch it on, Jaffe. So this now has turned into a, a boat. Yeah. And our underground structure here turned into a uh, it flipped over so it didn't actually float to the surface but if it was empty it would and uh, check that out our s sand has gone from solid to liquid oh my god well in real life the, the big ones dynamic liquefaction they saw that at the Christchurch the quite Christchurch church earthquake you get the same effect with water what happens there is if you've got water in your loose sand deposit, the earthquake comes through. The shaking is so violent that the water can't escape. And so what it does is increase the pressure, the, the, the pressure yeah, between the particles. It prevents them from coming into contact, and uh, you, you get a liquid. So mm -hmm. we're doing the same thing. You can have that happen out there in the real world if you have loose sand and saturated uh, uh, 
the soils. And that's what we could do next door with the shake table is demonstrate that. But in this case, we're just using air to do it. If you blow air violently enough through it, you get exactly the same effect. That's and the whole reason why we, yeah, the whole reason why we have it here is uh, we can reconstitute our samples very quickly. So mm -hmm. now, after you've run your tests, you're back to where you started from. You've got a nice, smooth surface. Mm -hmm. We can go in and run more experiments. And Jaffe has absolutely mastered the art of doing the things that you need to do to get uh, different uh, preparations. Dead sand, loose sand. And those are trade secrets now, right? We haven't published those yet. She's writing that paper now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. Okay. You just have to come and work in this lab. Alluviation is the act of raining sand through like a grid with specifically sized holes spaced pretty evenly from a specific height. Yeah. Okay. So the height matters because the higher you drop it from, the uh, more dense it'll be because it'll hit the sample faster. So we're at the top of our pluviation device, so this will make the most dense sample. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put the <laughs> put this device. Yeah, you can just put it on top. No, this is easier. Okay. Okay. Now let's go. It just looks really cool. It does look very cool. And we chose this board because yeah, it takes the longest time to flow out, but it also looks the nicest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't get clogged. The point of the board is that you can regulate uh, what density it makes it at by changing the hole size and the hole spacing. Imagine doing that as a way of preparing that whole sand bed that we just saw. I mean, that would be time consuming. You'd have to yeah. remove all of the sand, bring it back. Yeah, that's the traditional. What these guys have been doing is, in this uh, setup, you can, can at least measure the density because you got this small volume to work with very accurately. We're pushing the same penetrometer that you saw going into the bed mm -hmm. uh, into these samples, and then we're able to correlate everything together. We have a really well-controlled sample where we know the density, and we can figure out then what to do with this reading from the penetrometer, and then we can figure out what's actually happening in our test bed. Cool. And they've done it. Yeah, it is. It's a poster right now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think of it. If not, we can joke. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I can't the anything. best part of this job is getting dirty all the time. <laughs> and the worst part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the best and the worst part. <laughs>